Hello awesome people, welcome back to Software Inc and welcome back to uh, our season five playthrough. Uh, today we doing, we're doing another tutorial for Software Inc and what we're gonna talk to it, uh, to, about today is how to create a decent product. Now, I'm quite perfectionist, uh, perf quite a perfectionist, that's the way I should say it in English. Um, and the thing is, uh, I want to make a, 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 at least an outstanding product from the start, which is not always possible, of course. If we go take a look at our releases in this save, we can see here that we have some good quality, but those are more or less later on. Our first product release was in 1983, which was a great product. Now, having a great product at the start is always nice because you can work from that. You know, you, you know it's a good product, you have to market it a bit, make sure that you get some fans and then at the end, you will make a profit out of it. You should at least. Um, now, doing that is not always that easy because you start off as a one guy company, you have different things you have to do, you have different strategies you wanna mix up, you wanna go for different things. For instance, in this save, we were going for games at the start, but you could also do it with basically any product. I've heard people say that doing an operating system at the start is not possible. It is, I've done it in, uh, well, not on video, but I've done it on my own time uh, to try stuff out. It actually works. Uh, you just have to put in the time, put in the effort, and yeah, you will not be releasing a product in the first like five years maybe of your game, uh, but you will have a good product at that point when you release it. And that's basically the main tip I'm gonna give, give to you guys from the start. Make sure to take your time doing this, because if you don't do that, that means you end up with a mediocre product. Maybe it will sell, maybe it won't, but overall you will probably make a profit on those types of products, and it's not... You know, it's not a disaster to have one or two of those products in your list, but it is making it a lot more difficult if the first product you make is such a product. Because people will not, you will not get really much, you know, you won't get fans or not as much at least. You won't sell it very well. So basically it sets you up to be, to basically to start over um, entirely because you know, you, you don't have the amount of fans, you don't have that, that momentum you want from your first product. So how do you do this? How do you make that first product at least a good rating to make sure you have a, like a, a warm welcome into this into this, uh, world of software, Inc.? Uh, well, let's go to create a product. Let's just go over a few things, talk about a few things that you need and what you should do, at least in my opinion, because there are many ways to victory, um, but at least in my opinion, what you should take a look at before you start working on your product. Well, first of all, when you start the game, you should already know what your first product is going to be. Because if you know what your first product is going to be, you can allocate the skills and the specializations for your character uh, in the right way uh, so that you can actually find the product that fits your character and you can actually make that with the best efficiency, the uh, highest efficiency and the highest quality. Now, that being said, if you don't know the difference between specializations and skills, there is another video on the channel. It is in the same playlist as this one where I explain the differences between specializations and skills. But for now, we're gonna go into the create a product scene. Now, create a product, first of all, like I said, you have to choose whatever you wanna create. Now, for this, uh, let's, let's go for an antivirus, just because it's a, it's a fairly easy one to, 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 to use. Um, Actually, 3D Editor is probably one that will that most people start with because it's the most easiest one to start with, the, the easiest one to make a decent product out of. So that's another thing that if you know that, you could actually use that to your advantage. Now, how, do you, how are you going to create a product? Now, you have all the features here. You have uh, some information about the product here. Uh, you can go through these pages, of course. You can sort of create a more uh, retouching or drawing or designing to the editor, it's, it's kind of up to you. Uh, I don't really care for this as much as role play, uh, but I care for this to create that more interest uh, whenever you can. Now you're, gonna, uh, you're also gonna get this page, which is basically a summary of all the things and set who what works on it and who is gonna publish it in the end. I don't use publishers because most of the time they take up a lot of your uh, royalties, or a lot of royalties, which is gonna take a lot of your money and it's not really worth it because they don't do that much. Uh, the only one I used in the, in the past is printing, but yeah, it's not really that great to be honest. So let's go back to the start. Now, what, what do you need to know? Well, of course you need to know what you wanna make. Uh, sometimes you can pick a di different category. For instance, if you go operating system, you could go for console. You can see this just changes. 
console operating systems are, I think, a bit more um, forgiving uh, to, to the player uh, because it's a bit easier to make them, I think, but that's just my opinion. I'm not sure if that's actually the case. Uh, for instance, games, you could choose different games, uh, which is, they have an impact on what you need, uh, but it's not that big of an impact. So 2D editor, let's go for that as an example. Now we have the 2D editor, we have chosen the default category because there is no other category. Uh, we can set the price. If you just click price, it will set the uh, suggested price. Uh, for now it's 826 uh, because it's, it doesn't really have anything. Um, you can of course also click name or choose a name, whatever you want. Uh, now SCM, uh, we could source control management. We could put this on a server, which basically means if we do that, it will make sure that we have a few less bugs uh, than normally because we put it on a protected server and people work with that product. So it's it's kind of, they're not working in sort of safe files only, which is, I guess, how it works in real IT. I, I'm not sure, I don't work there. So uh, it says have all code synchronized in one place, which reduces bugs and makes your programmers more efficient during the alpha phase. Yeah, so if you have a server, make sure to use it. It, is, it doesn't really take much of your server limits. Uh, let's actually get the music back. Um, but yeah, it doesn't take much of your server limits, so just do it. You can also set it to in-house if you want to. I don't really use it uh, that much because, you know, it's more or less if you make a like a um, a game engine or whatever, you, should, you could probably do that, but you could probably also sell it and make money out of it, right? That's the kind of my, my view on it. Um, that's okay. So now we actually, we come to this little part and this is actually pretty important. You have some very important things you have to take a look at. So ETA is estimated time of arrival. Uh, don't take this too seriously. You decide when to create your product, when to release your product. Don't take, take this too serio seriously. This is just, uh, a ETA, so an estimated time of arrival on based on the features you select, based on everything that is needed to be implemented for this product at that point in the game, uh, and based on the amount of people you have, their skill and everything, it's not really saying much because most of the time, if you keep this in, in mind, you will end up with a mediocre product and that's just the thing we don't want. So don't, don't really look at this, okay? Don't really do that. Um, so speed boost, speed boost you, you can get if you have a framework or whatever, you can always always choose that. You can always make a new one, which will make it a bit longer. Uh, I have tried both. You can, you can basically, at the start, you can go for both ways. It doesn't really matter um, which one you choose. Uh, making a framework can give you a bit more speed and money in the future, uh, but it's more or less of a long-term thing and taking an existing framework it will you will pay some more money but you have a little speed boost at the start uh, or don't do anything of that and just make your own product without a framework and that's just you know you won't get a speed boost of or have to pay or get any money from it so basically just the regular product now uh this is this is important in the sense that they have recommended designers and programmers and artists it's good to keep it you know take an eye on, take a look at, because it will sort of show how much work you need to do, uh, but you don't have to fulfill these numbers. I have made, uh, for instance, a 2D editor with only one guy, with only my, my main character, uh, and then I had way more than this. I had all these features uh, uh, enabled, so, and that, does, that turned out to be a good product. So it doesn't really matter that much, but you can sort of see how much work is needed if you do it with less people. You can kind of get, a, get an eye on that. License costs, yeah, if you put licenses on it, like operating systems, you will have to pay that. Royalties, same thing if you use a framework or use a publisher or whatever. Expected interest, now that's important uh, and consumer reach is also important. Your consumer reach needs to be as high as possible, uh, but only if the expected interest is high enough. Because we now have a pretty high consumer reach, but we only have 11% expected interest. So only 11% of these people are interested in buying the product, which does not mean that they will actually buy it. So that means that you have to make sure that this goes up, right? And how do you do that? Well, it's based, based on partly fans, I think. If you have more fans in that category, you will get a higher interest because people know your, your, your for instance, for, for us, it would be games. People know that our games are nice. They are loving it, uh, especially simulation RPG games. Uh, so they will be more interested in any game in that sense that we will make. Um, but also we can up it by just clicking a few of these features. Now, again, if you don't know what features are, uh, 
why features are important and the uh, why these stars are here to make sure to go and watch the video on specializations and skills because you can't just willy-nilly click some of these and expect you to have a better product you have to actually know a bit about these sort of requirements uh, otherwise you won't end up with a product at all maybe uh, but yeah so let's for instance say that we want to make at least uh, let's let's go up to let's see what we could do let's let's click a few of these buttons and beautify doesn't really do anything it, actually that's that's yeah okay it doesn't actually do anything but okay let's go up to 94 percent expected interest with the features we built now you would say well, if you could just click click this button, well, maybe maybe we can get to 100. Yeah, if we do this, we can get to 100, but that actually makes it way longer to actually build this. So let's not do that. Let's go for 94%. Now, how do we get those last few percentages of interest? Uh, if we go to the next page, we can basically set a, uh, a simple operating system. Let's do what I do mostly is I go to active, filter by active, take the most active ones they mostly that most of the time they're also the newest ones if i see like like for instance this one door 2 is just uh, released in 1992 they are probably growing so i'm gonna put it on that one too so okay that's it take those don't try to go for too many uh because you will end up with a lot of extra work and some of these might go out of date when you actually release your product so let's go into this one. Now, this is where I use this tool. You can see that we are over designing basically and over retouching a little bit um, for our percentages because we need to be at these lines to get 100%. That's why we're not making 100% because drawing people are not, yeah, there's not enough drawing software, market satisfaction for drawing basically to get to 100%. Now, what we could do is we could change this around. And if we just make sure that these lines are all, uh, let's go like that, like all are all in the box in the uh, in the in the color boxes it should go up so we are 99% now if we are filling around a little bit as you can see it's now 100% and we don't need to add any of these extra features so this is actually a way you can play with it a little bit which is very very cool we can even try to yeah if we now take off the procedure, procedural shapes we are still at 100% and we are we don't need to add that feature in so that's amazing so next page you get a, a summary basically on what is there already a, if you're doing it right, you already took a look at it whilst creating the product. But the last thing that is important here is publisher, if you'd want that, but I won't recommend it. Uh, development teams, design teams. So who is gonna design this? Uh, I have set four teams to do that. Who is gonna work on it? I have set again, four teams to work on that. Um, you can also set one team, 10, te 10 teams, whatever you want. It's basically based on your team composition. And if you wanna know more about team composition, there will be a video on you know team composition builds out there in this same playlist. Um, this also shows what you need. So for code, we need most of it 2D and a little bit of system. And for art, we need all of it 2D, which is basically, you know, kind of logical because we're making a 2D editor. This is basically it. Now you have the choice to, if you have a subsidiary, you can let them make it, but I don't really use that feature that often. Uh, we can develop it or we can do project management. Project management is another tutorial. We're going to talk about that. It's a little bit vague in this game. Um, but yeah, we will talk about it a little bit more in another video again in the same place. So now you click develop and we see that over here it's, uh, let's put it on the, uh, on the bottom. Over here it is frame frames to the other iteration one. Now, if we're going to develop this, let's actually play out, play this out. And, oh, whoops, uh, I wasn't meant to do that because we were meant to design. We, we can see the design over here. You have four iterations max. Each iteration will make the product better, will make it um, uh, less buggy. Uh, and you can also do this, You can, uh, which is very important. Uh, where is it? I can't find it. Why, why is it not here? Oh, we can do a review. Yeah, of course. Uh, once you're in sorry once you're in alpha you can do the review which is very handy you can do specific reviews so only for 2d art for example uh or you can do a full review you can do a subsidiary i mostly use outsource because that's more reliable we can do okay and we will just let it play for a while and we will see what happens so if you you can end it before because this costs money as you can see it's cost is thirty and a half thousand bucks um, but you can end before if you want to, it will be less than that, but this is more reliable. Now open this review and now you can see it's a 1.4 out of 10, which is logical because we only just started it. Review accuracy is 100% because it's outsourced. That means that we get minus 2% uh, bucks on the, uh, at this point, com uh, completed thing. So we have 77% art and 7% code. We will get minus 2% bucks on that 
work. Uh, we can also see that there, the art's not that great at this point. The 2D system is not the 2D system uh, and code is not that great. Um, what you can do in Alpha 11 is reiterate. So what you do is by clicking this button, for instance, if we would let this go up and make sure that uh, this actually goes to the point where it is fully developed and you come in over here, you do a review and it's like a set six out of 10, that's not good enough in my opinion. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a reiteration. This will automatically pause the project and it will go and reiterate the the uh, the project again. So basically they're gonna, with the knowledge they have and the and the reviews they gotten, they will change up the, the design of their product to make it better. Now, if we now unpause and the people will come back at some point, um, they will start to work on this and boom. And now we can end it. It will immediately unpause this. So they will start working on it. And as you can see, the 77% went down to 71. So we have 6% of art that has been redesigned and that will make the product a little bit better. Also 1% of the code that we already did is, is, is basically gone because we redesigned that part too. Simple, simply said, those reviews will and these, those reiterations will make your product better and less buggy, which is very important if you are not that great at the start. Uh, so if we, if we let's actually keep them working a little bit more. So for instance, if we now have art at 100%, art is 100%, so basically it's done for this project. Code is not that far. So what we could do now is just do a review onto the art, okay? Uh, make sure that we, oh, oh, I don't, didn't want to have it done by a subsidiary. I didn't, didn't want outsource, okay. 10 reviews and we can see here it's a, a 1.3 out of 10. Uh, again, we see some bugs getting rid of, uh, we, we get rid of some bugs. We can reiterate it again and we will do that and boom. And we see another 6% of art is added. So this is a simple way. I would, wouldn't recommend doing this at the start of the product. Do it at like halfway and maybe at three quarters and then at the end. And then just judge from the from the actual uh, grades that you get to see if, if the product is good enough. I always aim for at least an eight or higher, but if I can, I will go for a 10 of course, uh, which I have done a few times in my playthroughs on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that is basically how you can create a decent product. Um, and it's also combined, of course, with the skill of your people. But the most important thing I have to say is take your time. Don't let it rush you. If you, if you release a bad product for the first product, you can basically start over the game because it will take you more effort to get through that and make a good product and get fans to actually like your company and buy your, your products and to just start over with a new product. Um, <laughs> that's just a simple way to be honest. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't rush it, take your time, make sure to look at all these different uh, important notes and that will create a good product for you. As always, uh, I hope you have a, you've enjoyed the video. I've been Hippo, you've been yourself. Thanks for being awesome and thanks for watching.